Hi, I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. This will be my floss tube number 15. Now, I did one earlier today and that was number 14 and I did it in costume. So I had a Renaissance Fair costume that I had made when I was a teenager. My husband, who then was my boyfriend, and I went several times to the Renaissance Fair. And I forgot to say that um, when we went in costume to the fair, it was so fun because anytime you go in costume to something, you just get to be more a part of it. You feel more, instead of just going and viewing something, kind of like you go to the zoo, you're part of it. And then the people that worked there, were interacted with us more because we were more into it. So I was talking to my son after I had done the video and just telling him about it and laughing. And I thought, oh, I forgot to say that in the video. So there you go. So that was floss tube number 14. Um, no costume today. But it is funny because I had said earlier, so that video, I actually was wearing a necklace. The same friend. I have a friend, Linda, and she has given me so many sweet, wonderful things. She loved to make jewelry and then she loved to purchase jewelry as well. So this was one that she had purchased from me and this is nice and light. So I thought, I I am okay with necklaces as long as they're nice and light. I just don't like heavy stuff. So this earring is gonna irritate me. There we go, it keeps turning. These were my mom's and I talked about those on another video. I talk about everything on these videos. But this one, I am gonna focus more on my embroidery. So the the last video I did was about my Valentine's finishes and it was already a very long video and I've had questions about my embroidery that I do. So along the way, I had done cross stitch years ago, then got into embroidery, then quilting, and I've just done things all along the way. Now, during my time that I did embroidery, because when I usually do something, I saturate myself into it. When I get back into my bead making, and or not bead making, jewelry making with beads, um, I get all that out on my table, I saturate myself with that, and I really do that. For now, I'm into cross stitch. Um, but I do want to venture back into embroidery and back into quilting and other things, so we'll see what I do. But I just wanted to share with you because I had some questions about how I transfer my design. And then I thought, well, let's just talk about some of the embroidery that I do. So this one not any cross stitch that I will share, but embroidery. So maybe if it's something that you've been thinking about, this would be of interest to you. And then if you just want to sit and listen to me stitch, even if you don't do embroidery, it may get you interested in just doing something different with the floss that you already use. So let's dive in and do this. Oh, the other things that I have to share with you here are I'm, even though it's it's the end of January now, I am going to be doing Valentine's decorations because I just recently took out my Christmas, but I'll leave Valentine up all February and I have a lot of cross stitch projects to fully finish. So we're good with it. This is just something I've had for a long time, probably made with, I don't know if it's handmade or not, but it was very white and I pea dyed it. So it looks a little more primitive. It's usually hanging up there um, with the wall hanging that I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then um, I've talked about my mom, who is the bear maker, artisan bear maker, and I inherited a lot of bears that she had made. That one's one of them. And, or she gifted them to me. So this is one that I have, and there is no tag on the back. So her business um, was Barbara's Bears by Barbara Brown. So this one doesn't have a tag. And is it because she made it for herself and she didn't tag it, or was this a friend of hers that made it? It looks in the style like the bears that she would have made. And I know we, my mom and I, did a lot of things with this particular little inexpensive locket. So, but a lot of other people did too. So that will be something fun. So whether it was something that my mom made or a dear friend of hers, um, that will be fun. So there we go as far as that goes. Okay, so let's dive in to the embroidery. Now, the way I got into the embroidery um, was I had done it as I, when I was a kid and I shared that in my floss tube one and I recently watched that to see what exactly did I share back then and I showed my embroidery that I did when I was about seven. 
So then I got back into it again in about um, 05, 04, 05. I got back into it again, inspired by my sister. And so I did, I have shared, um, a, I had to get my lights going. These are my box lights. So this set, um, long ago. So these were, of course, made about 15 years ago. So they are not all for sale right now. Some are, some aren't. So um, I got inspired to do that, but that was right before Christmas. So at that time we did a gift exchange and my mom was alive. And so she had picked my name and I said, mom, and cause she and my sister were both into embroidery. I said, I want to get into embroidery and she knew my style. And I said, just gift me stuff to get me started. So I know she gave me um, floss, which I already had a lot of DNC floss over the years anyway, from my cross stitch years, but she gave me probably some more floss. She gave me this book. Um, I don't even know if this, I should have checked to see if this was for sale. This is um, Powder, Meal, Powder Mill by um, Imaginating. So I know I did a lot of Imaginating was a company that was out in the early, uh, what is it, early, what century are we in? Um, it is getting late. I tend to do these late sometimes. But anyway, this is one that she did. And look at here was even my note from her to Bonnie from Mom. And I just did notes in here. So these were sometimes I would just see a coneflower. I would just draw it out, a sunflower. So um, this is a book that she gave me. That's how I got into it. Then that Christmas, so I had opened up the gift from my mom who had sent it from Colorado. My sister and her husband came over that day for Christmas. And so my sister, while she was there, she brought her embroidery stuff because I had totally forgotten how to embroidery. She was showing me how to do the stitches. So it's kind of funny because most of what people do for a line, you know, if you're doing a line on your stitching, straight stitch, most people would do the back stitch. Somehow in all the stitching that my sister showed me that day, Instead of doing the back stitch, I did the stem stitch. And I, just like I've done a modified big stitch, I kind of do a modified stem stitch for my straight stitching. So it's all in the pile here. So I'll show that to you in a minute. So I do my stitching very, very small. So um, by the time my sister left, she had like an hour and a half drive home. When she got home, she called to say that she was safe. And I was like, I love this. I'm having fun. So I stitched and stitched and stitched. Um, so when I get into something, I do it a lot and I did a lot of embroidery. So that was at Christmas time. Then I think that year, my sister and I went to the road to California show. So that would have been a month later, right down the street from me. And I found a booth and, um, they bear roots. So bear roots was big at that time. And so was bird brain designs. Those were the two, and Crab Apple Hill Studios. So those were the three that I got those designs and primarily everything I did from that era were those three designers. So if you will notice, I probably got this that time. Um, I do not know if this is for sale. If I was to check on all this stuff, I never would have got this video done. So um, Bare Roots, Hearts and Flowers Quilt, you will see that. So this was, oops, sorry, Riley's down there sleeping. I had intended to do all the embroidery on this and I did not. I ended up not doing that, but I did a lot of, so that I did other embroidery stitches on that. So you'll see, this is, uh, I think that's the feather stitch or the fly stitch. Um, I did that around there as well as the buttonhole stitch. So I just decided that I needed to do it a little bit faster and I remember talking to my sister about it and she said, just skip all the embroidery, do something else to get it done. Because by then I had bought so many, bought, I had purchased so many different projects to work on. So that was part of my progress. That same time I bought this book and I have worn this thing out. Bare Roots. So it was a book all about borders. Um, so the, <laughs> this was the stitching station. It says 10.05. So that was probably... Um, inventoried at 10 of 2005. I used this a lot. This was one of my favorite books and I did a lot of things with these different borders. Then um, I can't remember if I bought this this pattern and I think these all these are still for sale I believe if you go on Bare Roots site. Um, this one I bought a lot of these seasonal ones because I love seasonal ones. 
this is one of the few that I actually made up. Now I have a bunch of old frames and I just trade them out, but I really want to get some newer frames, but I'm a primitive type stitcher. So um, they're, they're a little bit harder to find and I talked about that on my last floss tube. So this is fun. So this is using both embroidery, fusible applique, which I do a lot of or did, and then I use the DMC to do more of a primitive kind of an applique right there. And this is what I did for a long time. I love, love French knots. I know a lot of people don't, and I learned, so this is the stem stitch that I do. If you can see, it's a very, very small stem stitch, so instead of a straight stitch, I do the stem stitch for all my stitching, and I do tiny stitches, and I have learned when you're doing the stem stitch and you're going, and it's a weird way because I'm, I'm spatially challenged, so if you're doing the stem stitch and you're, you're going forward over a loop, and you do that stem stitch, the stitches kind of want to weep a little bit. So I always think of going, I think of flipping backwards. So if I'm gonna do a circle, instead of doing the circle, what would that be, clockwise? That's better. I do it counterclockwise. So I would start here, and I would go backer, and backer? I would go backwards, and that helps the stitches, tiny little stem stitches, that helps the stitches want to stay together instead of kind of spreading out like a spider web. I'll try to show you close-ups as I go along. So I am not like I have shared before when I showed how to make my thread charms. It's like I don't I don't speak clearly enough, think clearly enough to do real tutorials. So these are like tutorial, not tutorials, demonstrations or just the way I do it. So this is the way I do embroidery. So we've got that one. I really don't want to keep throwing stuff on the floor, <laughs> but there we go. Okay, then another, and this is my working pattern. So I don't have the picture of this one. Again, these were from um, 15 years ago. So who knows, I'll probably find a box with the real pattern in it because I just found a box recently with all my old, old cross stitch stuff. So this is Bare Roots number 92, three sweet purses pattern. Now. I think this was the second time I had been to the Rhodes California show, but it was like the week before I went, um, I decided that I need to make a tote and I made a tote and it was very detailed. I finished it like at one o'clock in the morning, the night before the road to California, because whenever you go to a very crowded fair or venue, um, someday we will again. Um, it's very tight and there's a million people and you're tucking and so I wanted a handmade tote that I could tuck really close to me see it's even soft really close to me and kind of weave bob and weave around people so I can get in where I wanted to go so this was something that I had just made up so let's see if I can show you close so again um this goodness this is probably from that bare roots um from I don't know if I was to look at that, because that's my working copy, I don't know that I have the whole thing. This may be in that, or I may have just figured out how to make it. I honestly don't know. But I did both the fusible applique with the stitches that went over one, one thread. So I would use that fusible webbing, iron it on, and then stitch it so the edges don't, um, they don't come unraveled. And I like... I like that stitching because it almost looks like watercolor. So I even did, you know, the little little buttons and I did little stuff along the way. So I did this so long ago, I do not know if this was part of the pattern or not. So again, um, I'm just kind of showing you some of this old stuff that I used to do. Now, these are part of the pattern. This is one of the pockets and it's a real pocket. This is one of the pockets that's part of the pattern. And, oh, that's where I must have gotten that idea. Okay, so um, in, the, in the wall hanging that I'm gonna show you, there's a heart, so I must have just reduced it from here. That's one of the hearts. Is that the same thing? Yep, just a different color. And then this was a different purse. So again, I change things all over the place. I'll take a pattern and I'll change it up. So this is just a pocket. I remember the purse that you were supposed to make 
was like this size. This tiny little thing was supposed to be one purse. So I just turned it into a pocket. The stars are along the edge. That probably was from the pattern because it's the same gal that did the, the book. So here we go. Similar, um, but that's one side. And then there's even these. Oh, I know, this was supposed to be like a cell phone. Back when cell phones were tiny, this was supposed to be a little cell phone tote. So I did it for a side. I probably had my cell phone in there because that was back in the days. I used to love the old cell phones. Um, oh, I loved the old ones. And that was another one. So this was just embroidery, using floss, making a tote. It has a soft bottom, so it folded nice against me when I was tucking and bobbing and weaving. Then I just did a goofy, you know, not really matching. This was thick canvas, nothing matched on the inside because this was in the days I did not have a lot of um, quilt fabric, quilt quality fabric. And so I didn't have anything that I wanted to what I would call waste to go inside there because I wanted to spend all my money at the show and buy patterns. So here is, <laughs> one of my lights almost fell. Um, here is the best one. Here's the best. Okay, so this is my favorite. So let me tell you more about it. This is the pattern. So obviously I did some changing. So if we could look and see, oh, you know what? Actually, that was in the pattern. But again, it's the same designer. I switched out the I love you and this is something else. I have this pattern, I'll show you, it's in a book. Um, it was actually in a, in a magazine. Is that envelope? Yep, that envelope, similar. But this I think was from the imagination, um, little hearts from the imagination thing. This, I did not learn how to do a snap, so this does not open, I, I need to change that. And then this heart is there but instead of leaving that top having it all one piece I did hugs and kisses that was probably from another book the center there we go the center and then these two pieces over here now my husband and I um, when we were dating whatever that poem is grow old along with me the best is yet to be there's more to it but we've always said that together, even when we were teenagers. And so um, this one, I see there's, there's different sayings that were in those different pieces. So here we have this. I changed the design on the pocket. So grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. This actually is a real pocket, and there is a B on there for best is yet to be. And then this is a separate piece. So if we look at this... Um, I found, I still found the charm pack um, that I had. So this was a Nancy Halverson charm pack that I used. And then just bits and pieces of other fabrics. But um, I did that. Was that in there as well? No. So I chose to do this. So I chose to do these stitches. I'm going to share with you where you can learn these stitches in a moment. But I just, I liked it because all these colors matched. They are all... If I can look at these, they're all from the same designer. They're all from Nancy Halverson, um, who I loved when I started collecting my fabrics. And now they're a little bit more bright than I would generally do. But this right now hangs right where that is. I put that there because, and I'll talk about that on another video, that one some other time. But I didn't want that just naked up there. But this one, sometimes I will leave this up all year um, because... I love it and it makes me very happy. So again, I'll do a close up for you so you can see all the fun things on there. I love details. And so if I go close to, and you can see the stitching. So you can see this is, there we go. This is the stem stitch and I have to use, I'll tell you about my needles in a moment, but I have to use extremely fine needles and then one strand of floss, and this was when I was doing over dyed as well as DMC. Um, but you can see when I do these circles, so that's where I would go counterclockwise to go around that circle because that would be going backwards so they stay tighter and they don't, like if I was to go clockwise and I was to pull this down, 
it could like pull forward. So that's where I go counterclockwise when I stitch tiny, tiny stitches because I have a very, very thin, fine needle to do all those stitches. These are just lazy daisies and um, just fun. So that's that's the kind of embroidery that I do. So I had a huge compliment from my sister because my sister is an amazing artist and very talented and she's done almost, she knits as well. I, I never learned how to knit. She's very talented, um, seem needle, needle worker. And um, after I had been doing embroidery for about a year and I did it a lot, she said, you are better than I am. It's like, whoa, whoa. Um, that, that was high compliments um, and I loved it. The other things I wanted to share, because I really like to share with you, you don't have to buy all this stuff. I just, I have had this forever. So I found an old notebook with all my old embroidery stuff and it's bits and pieces of things, ideas that I saw. Um, I even had a catalog in there that was a stamp catalog and like an old stamping up catalog and I could see designs. So you can get designs. That's a neat thing about embroidery. I called it like cross stitching, off road cross stitching because cross stitching you, you have specialty stitches, but you're staying within a linen and you're generally doing a cross to make the full design. When you do embroidery, you do the outside. Um, so you're doing the outline and you use a lot less floss. That's where I was shocked when I did um, kind of a, not a full coverage, um, but I did a cross stitch project and I was like, oh my gosh, I went through almost the whole skein of floss on that one project and I realized well of course because I'm doing a lot more I'm doing a lot more full coverage stitching so if you think of it you can look at color books you can look at invitations Christmas cards a lot of things that you can get designs from so this is something I had from a long time uh, it was just a napkin and I thought oh gosh that would be darling I could stitch that up you know so I just save things and I'll show you how to transfer things then this is an old newsletter, um, so I'm just going to show it to you quick because um, I don't know. I don't know what copyrights they would have, but it was from a quilt store, the Country Loft. So I just saved um, drawings, um, and I thought maybe I could stitch those up. So I just save things, or they inspire me. But there's a lot of places that you will find designs that you can change and stitch and just have fun with. Here is something else that I stitched. Um, this is my working pattern. Um, so somewhere I've got a box of all my real patterns. Um, but it's Bare Roots number 103. It's Little Things Pillow. So this took me a whole summer to do. And I remember stitching this. And um, I have used it. So it it's, looks kind of primitive because it has gotten dirty. Because it has been used in my sewing room or in my office. And this is very fun, but obviously I like the lettering. So um, I like the lettering. And this was, this, this I believe was, I don't think I veered from the pattern. So just all the details of this. I loved it. And I remember one time I went to my brother's house and he and his wife, went on a trip. So I went to visit my parents in Colorado. My brother lives just on the other side of the Rockies from them. And I went there with my kids and I stayed and babysat his kids, babysat. I, I hung out with my nieces. Did I have two nieces at the time? No, I don't think the, no, there was only one niece and one nephew. And I hung out with them um, for a couple days while my brother and his wife went on a trip. And I remember sitting, oh, their house is amazing, just truly amazing. They live up, up in a mountainy area. I remember sitting in a window seat, watching the birds and just stitching away, stitching away on this project. So what I had done is I put this pillow together first and then I stitched it because that was, that was the only way that I could do it and make sure everything was centered. So again, I did it a long, long time ago um, oh, but the funny thing is too, so, um, my niece, my niece was the oldest one. And at that time she was probably about eight. She was younger than my boys. 
Um, and so my brother and his wife were going to be coming home. I said, oh, let's clean the house. Let's get it all nice and clean. So when mom and dad get home, the house is clean. And they were looking at me like, what are we, what are we talking about? That's not fun. And I said, okay, so, um, I don't want to say names, but okay. So you get the broom and start sweeping and you get this and start doing this and you get this. And so I had everybody working and my niece is sweeping. She goes, this is just like Cinderella. But instead of the, what it was, it, it was so funny, so dramatic. Instead of the wicked stepmother not doing anything, you're working too. <laughs> so that was the same trip as this. So I remind her of that, that I was the wicked stepmother. Um, but I was cleaning too. So fun trips, fun memories. Um, what else can we share? We're just dumping everything on the ground. Okay, so I had shared in my last floss tube that I found a box found some of my old cross stitch stuff. In that, I also found, this is the working copy, but this is a bird brain design. I just know from looking at it. Um, I had purchased a lot of bird brain because she, the, I can't remember her name, the designer was always at the Road to California show. So this is where I wanna introduce you to how I transfer stuff. I use the, I used, I used to use, and again, this has been folded up probably for about 12 years. Um, this is in progress, so I found a whip. I left the needle in there, which is not good. That's been staying there forever. Um, but this is um, this is a work in progress and um, something that I was just going to get rid of it. You know, I, I get like, eh, I wouldn't do that design anymore. It's more cutesy than I would do now. It is sweet, but it it's just not as primitive as I was doing. But I thought, oh, I can finish it because it's almost done and I can make a project bag out of it. And then I'll know my embroidery is in there. But if you will notice this is blue on here. So this is where I want to kind of introduce you. Do I? No, I got one more thing to show you first before I, I get, I, before I move into that, um, mode. Um, the other thing I want to show you is this is a project. So this is what I do with my magazines. I go through my magazines cause I, you know, I had a lot, I had a lot of magazines and I thought I just cut out the project that I want and get rid of the rest of the magazine because I really need more storage space. So this was from American Patchwork and Quilting October 2004. So if you have a lot of old magazines like I used to, um, this is Meg from uh, Crab Apple Hill Studios, which I have a lot. I have a huge collection I'll share with you if you hang with me. So I have this that I want to work on. Now, look at that fabric. Um, my mom had given me some and I showed how I tea dyed it. So I, I don't do so much of the pristine white. I like more of the primitive. So I had tea dyed this and I thought, oh, how fun. I'm going to make a project bag. So I will do this for the top of the project bag. I've got Rick Rack and then I will do this as the bottom and then this part will be the zipper. So that's, that's what I have in progress. And when I do the transferring... I have a light that I will share with you, and now I am going to use something different than the blue pen. So keep sticking with me. There's a lot to go over on where I have been and where I'm going to. And now I realize I did an hour and a half long video earlier today. Then I was on the phone with my son for about 45 minutes, and then I had dinner with my husband talking with him. And now I'm worn out, but I'm a half hour into this. I'm going to keep going. So let me have a drink. wet my whistle and we're just going to keep working through this where I'm just sharing a lot of my ticks, ticks, <laughs> tips and techniques with you. So, um, oh, and you know what else? My eyes are hurting because I don't wear my glasses when I do these videos, but generally the minute I wake up in the morning, I put my glasses on and I leave them on all day until I go to bed at night. And so because I did the video earlier and now I've got these box lights, my eyes are, my eyes are fading, but we're going to stick with this. Um, so the blue pen. Now the blue pen was one I used to use. There was a clover one. Do I have the clover one on my table? I don't see it. There is a clover blue pen. Um, and then there was this fine point. Um, a very fine point mark be gone um, and I used to use these 
and I knew I know they always came out I didn't iron them that's the one thing sometimes if you iron the blue markers they can stay on there I would get the project wet so this is what I want to explain to you why why I don't do this anymore so I would do this design and pretty much it goes away but sometimes you go off and then that blue is still there so I would have done this whole project then I would have gotten a spray bottle I would have gotten it flat on a towel this is what I did I would spread it on a towel I would spray it with the water and I remember I used over dyed floss and I would get it wet that would make the the blue pen disappear and I do that a lot in quilting it would make it disappear then I would get a towel and I would dry it off as quick I would press it and want to dry it I don't know that I ironed it because that might have shrunk it I would probably have set it maybe in the sunshine now the first time I did that my over dyed bled and I called my sister and was like what the heck do I do so she told me about a product that I used at that time it was called retain R-E-T I don't I can't even think how to spell it it was called retain and that helped um, the the fabric or the floss retain that ink but you had to get it in water so I would get a bowl of water I would put the retain in there that I would put that over dyed floss in the water and it would bleed some but that retain kind of helped it stay as a fixative but I would still lose some color but that was because that's how I did it. But I had a lot of floss. I had a lot of floss. And a lot of it I used that retain with. So now, fast forward to where I am cross-stitching, not using the blue pen, not getting it wet, yet um, this is what I have found. And I, I think I found something that can kind of show. I may need to get my glasses on. No, I can see it. Okay. So what I had was, I would have, like, say there would be a called for color, like this is Noel. Um, there would be a called for color, and mine is not as dark as it was originally. And I know there's dye lot changes, but I kept everything out of the sun so it wouldn't have faded. There's just dye lot changes, and there's different dye changes along the way. But I also know I lost some of the vibrancy of those over dyes because of the process that I did. But it was worth it to me at that time. And I never expected to get back into cross stitching. But this is where you can kind of see, I don't know if you can really see a little bit of the difference. And I was just guessing, is this one? Um, so this to me looks a little bit more vibrant. This is Noel, and I used this a lot back then. And then this to me looks a little bit more faded. But that's what would happen. I would have one that was more vibrant when I bought it. Then I would do that retain to it and it would lose some of its vibrancy because some of that dye would come out because of the over dye. So I, I, I don't do that anymore. Not going to do that anymore. And so when I do press my cross stitch, if I need to get it at all wet, I have it upside down on a pressing cloth like Vana has shown. And I spray mostly around the edge because I use a hoop. And I try not to get any of that water on the floss. If I do, I work to get it as dry as quickly as I can because I don't want a project to bleed. So how am I going to avoid bleeding now yet still transfer that pattern? That's the trick. So I needed to figure that out along the way. So I got into... As I'm looking at what embroidery, like who who's new in embroidery out there now? Um, oh, it's a, a quilt, a quilt pattern that I got for wool. Um, it's hatched and patched. It's Annie Downs. So it's this designer, Annie Downs, hatched and patched. I have a couple of her quilts and it's um, fabric applique, wool applique. But she talked about using a transfer pen, and I believe this is what it was, the friction. I would have to get that out, and I forgot to do that. But I also know that now Kathy Schmitz is a designer that I've been talking about. And she on Instagram had a tutorial um, because she has, if you go on her website, she has a yearly 
club and you get a different pattern every month and then she has a video and she shows you how she stitches it and she shows different variations so i subscribe to her youtube channel because i want to see her stitching now i have not gotten those garden club books or i mean those those club pieces because i have both of these and i really like them and so some of the stitching transfers back and forth but i like how she showed how she transferred so um i keep thinking i didn't tell you something but it's okay just stick with me and then we're gonna we're gonna do this stuff i purchased this i was asking on one of my very first floss tubes to give me ideas because there was way i had an old light box from long ago and it it was not very good so i got rid of those and i was just using my window but it was hard on my it was because you could tape something to the window, use the sun, and that's your light box. There's other different ways to rig one up with a plastic box with a light underneath it. I just wanted a light box, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I got this one on Amazon. I have not used it yet. I don't think it was, it was about $20. So it was Tick, Tick Tech it was the company, but look at, this is how thin it is. So it's a nice thin one. And I think it's USB. There's a plug. And my Ot Light, is it Ot? Yeah, it is an Ot Light. Um, it has a USB, so I could use it right here at the table. So think of a light box. So this is a light. I can put something on it. I can put an outline, put my fabric on top of it, and it will shine through so that I will be able to trace something. So as I was watching Kathy Schmitz, she was using this friction pen. So I have heard different things about different marking, um, different marking devices. And as a quilter, if I am going to be marking on a quilt because I, I machine piece, but I hand applique and I hand quilt, I don't want any marking not coming off and messing up my quilt. So I was really leery. Um, because I've used the Clover blue pens or that other one that I just showed you. And then recently I went to a quilt guild meeting and Jen, I think it's Jenny Lyons had these. And she said these these were very good. So she's a professional quilter. So I thought if she's, if she's selling them. Um, so I bought some and they were nice and fine. So I bought some of these. But again, you have to use water to get those off. So I am very conservative when it comes to, I guess cautious would be the best word, very cautious with marking pens. So um, I hadn't really wanted to use that friction one, but I thought Kathy Schmidt is a professional too. So I'm, I'm just taking advice. And I think Annie Downs recommended that that as well. So it is, it's weird. It's like, uh, so you do it like that. It's like a gel ballpoint pen. And um, I've tried it, so I've marked with it, and you iron heat makes it go away. So all the things that I've heard about, sometimes the ink can come back if it gets cold. I don't know if it was these pens or not. So I'm going to use this on my embroidery, but I am not going to use these on my quilts until this is totally tried and true. So this will be on my embroidery. I'm going to try this next. So I will use um, that light box and I will use this. And I know other designers use that as well. So let me keep talking to you about marking um, because I wanna show you how I transfer on thicker stuff. So this would be the Osnaberg. Um, so just, you can, you can, the other neat thing about embroidery is you can use anything. You can embroider on anything. You can do it on denim. You can do it on anything which is very cool, whereas cross stitch is different, unless you do the uncounted cross stitch. And um, Lori um, from Not Forgotten Farm on her blog spot, farmhouse not forgotten dot blogspot dot com, um, has uncounted cross stitch. Super cool, primitive, and I like that. And then you don't have to use linen. But this is something, this is <laughs> this is this. So I've got two. I had made this, um, and I did this for my mom, and I even did a letter to her, 
Um, and then when she passed away, I got this back. But at that time, I had intended to do one for myself. I remember the camping trip that I did this on. And um, so it's neat having fun memories come back. But this is what I do with my embroidery. So it's funny because with cross stitch, many people stitch in hand, I use a hoop. With embroidery, most people use a hoop, I stitch in hand. I'm just kind of backwards and I do that a lot. But this is another thing that I do. I use batting on the back so that when I stitch, it gives, it gives that stitch something to sink into and I have tried to stitch I've tried to do embroidery without the batting and it there's something about when you use a batting it helps the fabric so it doesn't pull and distort it helps it keep its shape and I really like it there's pros and cons and depending on how long this this video goes I'll tell you some of the cons if I'm trying to make a quilt out of something like this um, so this is what I did but of course this was one from long ago but this was back when I did warm and natural now I have found a thinner batting that I will be using on future embroidery projects and so the thinner the batting it's still going to do the same thing, but you have less of a poof that you have to deal with when you put it in a project. Um, so Quilters Select, quil no, Quilters Dream, I'll, I'll put it in there. Now I can't remember. Is it Quilters Dream Request or Select? Anyway, it's a, it's a thinner batting cotton, and I'll put that in the, the drop-down notes. So um, now... This is this this is the thing that that the that I had someone ask how do I transfer onto a fabric you cannot see through? That was what my sister taught me how to do. It has to do with this. This is tool, I believe it's called. Really cheap. You can get it anywhere. So this is very thin. You can see right through it. It is like a netting. Now, this when I first got into embroidery at the time, my sister had this fabric but it was being discontinued at the time this one um, so it was being discontinued at that time but then there was another one that came about and it looked very similar okay here's where you can see the difference okay so this this was the one that was out at the time this was the one that I was able to get and I bought a lot of it um, I bought yards of it. My sister-in-law actually found it for me in Colorado, and I said, buy everything they got. So very similar, different maker, different fabric, but it's a quilted background. So if you can see, it's thicker. You can't see through it, and it has kind of a backing on there. So I would not very easily be able to use it on a light box, even though it's not super thick. It's just a little bit more awkward. So the way that I transferred is with using that tool. So you would have to make a working copy of a pattern. So you get that working copy of a pattern. You put that on the light box. Then, and you tape that down. Then you get a piece of this and tape that down on top of it. So let's see if I can... I didn't even think about how I was going to show you. But you'll probably be able to figure that out from the words... Um, where is a piece of paper? Paper, paper, paper. Okay, so let's say this is my working copy. Um, so I'm going to get my working copy that I've made a copy of, of the piece of paper. Tape that on my light box. Then I'm going to tape this on, and I don't want any wrinkles, so I'm going to pull it and tape it. So this is straight taped on there. Then I get a Sharpie, not... This sharpie because this would get stuck in all those little holes so you get that regular old sharpie and I use brand new ones like my husband has a lot of them he uses for construction mark and stuff I have my own so I would use a brand new very sharp one this is called fine point but then what I would do is I would trace that pattern with a sharpie so of course it's messing up your working copy but I would trace that whole pattern so then the pattern transfers onto this. So let me show you, because I keep all of my old ones. So what you end up with are these. So this is 
one of my projects and this is there's a whole scene I saved them all okay so here's one here is there you can see it oh there you go so here's can you see that yep it's backwards oh no it's right ways okay so here's one of the patterns so that's what I did so then I take this so it, it is time consuming so I transfer it onto here then I take this and then I put this down on something I don't even think no I don't need the light box because then now you're taking this and you just you want it actually I would probably tape it on the light box just because I could tape it then I take this and I get my marking utensil and then I would trace it on there usually I would use this or the thicker one and I would trace that on and then it would be blue so now I am going to have to try this friction now is that going to get stuck in all the little all the little squares of that I don't know I haven't tried it yet so um, let me just try it right now and see oh no just fine because look at what I did and there's that mark right there so it transfers it transfers just fine there you go um, so friction, um, it's friction clicker 07 erasable is what this says. So I saw Kathy Schmitz was talking about it and I just got it on Amazon. So let's see, there you go. So that's how you transfer. That way you can do it on anything, even something as thick as denim. So that is the transfer method. What else can I share with you? I would wish this was interactive where people could ask me questions. Um, I wanted to share with you a couple things. Um, I, I've shared this before on my floss tube, but this is a really cool book. So this is available now. Um, Stitches, Stitches from the Harvest by Kathy Schmitz. So check out her YouTube. Check out her Instagram. She does a lot of tutorials, a lot of teaching. But you can see, see how it's kind of puffy? Um, that sometimes where that batting behind there, I'm just guessing, that's what mine would do. If the batting was thick behind there, that's what it can kind of get a little bit of puffiness to it. But there's, there's even, so what's this one that I've got going? So I've got this piece of fabric that I found, a scrap of fabric, and I'm going to do this. So I'm probably going to reduce that pattern um, because I want it smaller. I don't want it so big. Um, and that will be my embroidery project. Looks like she does the stem stitch. Yeah. If you look at that close, um, she is doing the stem stitch as well. Whereas most people do the back stitch. But the coverage of that stem stitch makes it... Um, I just love it. That's, that's just the way I do it. Um... Oh, here's a nice, a really super close up. So that's what the stitching looks like. Now, if you're wondering how to learn how to do stitches, um, in the back she has, and most books that you would buy would also have something like this. I have never done this, the couch stitch. I've never done that. And there's something that I want to do that actually uses that. So I'll be using a new stitch. I've done most stitches. But not that so this is oh it's the feather stitch so I do this a lot that's the fly stitch I've never done this um, and I've, I've done a lot of the other stitches but this is a very good just showing you how to do the different stitches this is one that I've picked out that I want to make because I love needle books so that's a needle book that um, that I want to make but that is stitches from the heart then recently I picked this one up stitches from the Yuletide and I shared in the last floss tube, there was something that I want to make. Um, and I decided the project that I did, I'm not, I wasn't going to, I was going to just do a different design. I don't particularly care for this design, but I like the project bag. And then she explains very well how to make that, how to make that project bag. But this is what you end up with. So these are pockets that you can use. So it's kind of like a needle book with... Um, with the handles so that one is a really nice book as well and then because so many of these patterns I don't know if they're still available and I thought oh I want to share with you things that you can purchase now um, Fat Porter Shop 
beginning of December, I think, I got this on sale. So it's Annie Downs, and I had shared this on one of my other floss tubes. But um, see, there's embroidery stuff in there. This is a needle book. Um, ugh, I really want to do this one. Funny, whimsical, kind of goofy. Um, it is a very long, it's the 12 days of Christmas, but just fun and goofy. This is, okay, this is the difference. So this lettering is the back stitch. So you can see it's just a little different. Um, either way, but you can see right there, instead of a solid line, it's kind of a dot. It's a line, space, line, space, line, space. So different either way. Try them both. Um, oh, here's even more close up of what. So all this, I would do the stem stitch, and this looks like it's all um, the back stitch. So just different. You try it, see what you like. And again, I'm going to share about this just continues it on. I just thought it was just fun and goofy, and I loved it. Um, what else was in here? Um, oh, that was a quilt. But there are several projects in here that are embroidery. So those are available now, which I love that I can share with you things that are available now. Okay, I'm just going to work through the stuff that I have stacked here. Now, um, when I do embroidery, I use these. So these, you can, you can get most places. I just happen to get them on Amazon. They probably have them at Fat Quarter Shop too. Thimble pads. So they are little sticky things that fit on your finger. I have them everywhere. I use these when I hand quilt and I use these. These are my thimbles. So I reuse them all the time. So I stick them all over the place, but I stick them and it goes on my fingertip. And, um, and I love it because when I do embroidery, I use very fine needles and I have had them, if it's slipped off here or I don't use them, it, it goes through my finger and it feels like it hits my bone. So I love using them. And I, I bought a three pack. I go through them a lot. So let's take that off now so I don't lose it. But I just stick them, just stick it back on there. And then eventually they don't stick because they get all greasy and I just throw them away and start over. Okay, so when I went to the Road to California show, I wanted, uh, I knew there was going to be a lot of vendors and I wanted to find the, the perfect needle for me. So every vendor that I went to that had needles, I was looking and either I talked to them or I just looked on my own and I bought a variety of needles. I probably bought six or seven different packs of needles. This is what I found and I wrote on there because otherwise I wouldn't remember. So this is this was my number one. You can see I wrote on there. So John James size size 10 embroidery. Um, I wrote good fine, thinnest. So it is the thinnest embroidery needle. So um, of course they are very fine and they will bend. Then I, you know, I don't mind using a bent needle until it gets so bent. It, it's just not working. So um, that, that was my favorite. So these are my embroidery needles. This was the second finest. So Bowen Embroider Cruel number nine. So this was another very good quality one. Um, then this one is a size 11. I like that it was in this little case, but it's in here, but I don't have any marking. I'm assuming that was my number three choice. Um, I don't even, I don't know if I've seen this company since then. Um, Gina Kimball's Fox Glove Cottage. Love the packaging. Um, embroidery, red work, size 11. 16 in the case. So those, those are my tools. And then of course, because I'm just stitching in hand, um, because it has that batting on the back and I use my fingers and because I'm doing such a fine stitch, um, I couldn't do that fine of a stitch if it was in a hoop. I needed my fingers. I haven't done embroidery for a bit. Um, I recently got into it and did it, but when I do that very fine, fine stitching, it takes a long time because I, I, I do a lot of stitches in like a quarter inch and it looks like I'm painting with thread or drawing with thread. So um, it just depends. So you do what works with you. Hang on a second. Let me show you something of my mom's. So this is how my mom did her stitching. 
So this is hand. I've shared about this. So I did a whole quilting video, one of my very first ones, and it was only a half hour because by I was just so tired and it was really hot and I couldn't get the video to work. But um, it was quilting maybe number three, but it was about my mom's quilts and why I love them. So I shared about this one. But it was hand quilted, but look at her embroidery. Larger stitches. So it is the stem stitch, but larger, much larger stitches compared to mine. Um, so here's something of mine to compare it to, um, where you can't really even see my stitch very well. You can see it there, but hers is larger. That's the way she did it. She liked it. And I love it um, because it's my mom's. Everybody has their own style. You just do what you like. Now, um, what else can I share with you? Let's look at, okay, so we talked about, and I you just buy a big chunk. It's almost nothing for that. That's the tool. Thinner batting. So I have, I just saved scraps of my batting. I even, like these are, I just picked out, this was the whole box. So, you know, I've got big chunks of this wonderful stuff, but look at this, no scrap left behind. This was the original stuff, little tiny scraps. I can, I can do stuff with it. So I just have, I just have a box and I save all of that. I can use Osnaberg. This was my Osnaberg linen um, and I tea dyed that. I can use that and you know it's amazing you can use wovens. I have a lot of wovens um, that I can pull out and use too because I like primitive um, and then fabric as well. So here are here's some here's just some other stuff just so I can show you and inspire you. I think this is still available. Um, Crab Apple Hill, again, um, this is ginormous. I did not realize. I need to reduce it because I would like this to end up being much smaller. This is a very large, um, what is this one? Number 111, Heart of the Home. It ends up being 26 and a half by 19 and a half. That was, it's large. Um, so I want to make it, I would just want to reduce it and make it smaller. But um, that's another pattern, and I love I love all those flowers. So I would not do it. I would do it in a lot of different colors. I wouldn't do it all black because I want it colorful. Now, um, when I um, I had shared this, and this this is still, you know, it's been sitting here for like a month. It's a project bag that I want to finish. I had an extra project, and I want to get rid of my whips, so I stitched this. So this is just stitched on here, line stitched on, but I don't know if you can kind of see, so you can see there's a little bit because of the batting is behind here. When I went to put this on, I just, I got my scissors and I have, um, where, I have this, I've had these forever, probably since I was a teen. These are my gingers because my first job was at a fabric store. Um, so I really like this, this set of gingers for this. So when I went to put this on there, I wanted to get rid of the batting. That's, I wanted to get rid of the batting. So what I did was I got these scissors and I went along. See, this is what the back looks like. If you have, this is the front and this is the back. So you can see it, it goes in and it kind of bites into the batting, but I don't want all that extra batting. So I, I just did this. So I got, I went like this. I was doing it much more careful with my glasses on. And I went in and I, I'm not gonna do it close because I don't have my glasses on. And I just stitched, but I used, this was on the bottom so it wasn't gonna get into my embroidery. And I just went in carefully and I trimmed it as close to that stitching as I could. So that way I could, I did a quarter inch seam or yeah, I did a quarter inch edge is what I did on that one. And so I just folded it over. But that is the trick when I do embroidery. I wish I liked doing it without the batting because if I made it into a wall hanging, I don't think I would ever do an embroidery on a quilt that actually got used. I would do it for a wall hanging. Um, and Crab Apple Hill, if you watch um, Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, has done many Crab Apple Hills with the coloring. There's either colored pencils or colors. There's there's a lot of them out there. I just haven't done that um, because all the ones that I have were from decades ago, and this is this was the style at the time. 
Um, I wish I wish I liked doing it without the batting um, because it it just creates that thickness that I have to figure out how to deal with. And then if I do in a um, if I do it in a wall hanging in a quilt, I have to figure out how to deal with that batting there when I also may put another layer of batting. So it just creates a little bit of an issue. But I want to show you a project, and it, it is not for sale currently. Um, so in this project bag, that was what I had shown before. This was just an extra one that I had made that I was going to give away and decided not to. Um, but that way I would know this project, which I still have to finish. I think I've shared this before on a floss too, but since we're talking embroidery, we're going to share it now. Again, I can't get enough of those uh, French knots, but that's one of them. Um, tool shed. This was where I was showing my friend. I was showing off. Oh, this is how I trimmed it. So you can kind of see how carefully I trimmed the edges around there. Look at lipstick mark. Um, I was showing my friend how I could get rid of that blue marker and I went with my tongue to touch it, to get it wet, to get it off. And I left lipstick mark, but whatever. It's probably never going to get finished anyway. Um, so this one, this, okay, so here's the other thing about the blue marker. This had been all blue marked. I had the design on here, but if you have weather that is moist, so I've had it where I have the windows open sometimes when it's raining, that moisture comes in and it disappeared because I had the batting on there already. So that tells me I had the design on there. So I just have to redo it. Um, let's see. So this is berry patch. This is watering can. Some of these I changed a little bit, I think. Here's the garden gate. Um, and I used all the same, whatever that same uh, thread was around the edge. So that kind of unified it. That I think is my favorite one. Is this one done? No, here's another one that needs to get done. Um, flowers, this is in progress and look at everything has disappeared. So I'm gonna have to remark it again. Now, this one, Rose Arbor. Now, on the pattern for the, the big main piece, on the pattern, there was no rose in the middle on the fence. The whole fence was just plain. And so all I did was I just kind of took that design and I just drew it on there and then I stitched it. So this is the centerpiece. And I remember at the time, so when I first got into embroidery, this pattern was going out of stock then. So this was like 15 years ago at least. It was going out of stock. I wanted it, so I remember I called. My sister was at my mom's in Colorado, and I called and I said, I know it's not, it was like my birthday or Christmas, I know it's not there yet, but I want these patterns, and I would really love it if you guys bought them for me and saved them for me for a gift, because I probably didn't have any money. And so they did. So I got them. So they were out of stock long ago, but they're, they're beautiful. So Crabapple Hill. So hopefully I explained well enough how you use this to transfer on. Um, and then once you have this, you're good to go. So ask me any questions if I need to clarify something, but hopefully that's understandable. Um, wow. I think I got everything. Let me look at my notes. Did I show you everything? Pretty good. Oh, uh, this pillow was one that was on my mom's bed. She had made that and it was hand applique. Um, so hand applique. And it was, it was one that I inherited from my mom. But I remember when I saw that, I didn't do applique at the time. And I thought, oh my gosh, I love it. I really want to learn um, how to applique. So that one inspired me. Since we're talking about embroidery. Here's another one. This one I just did. Um, you know, I just probably took this design from one of the things I just showed you and put it on there and um, just put it in the frame. Good to go. So you can just take elements and do things where you want it to go and just have fun and just enjoy. Wow, I think I did everything. Yep, let me look at my notes again. Okay, floss. Um, lots of color blue pen, the tools, sandcastle, embroidery. 
background. So if you want to learn embroidery stitches, I know I was watching, um, oh, that's another good place. Can't think of where I have that pattern now. Um, I was watching, oh, I can see her face. Stitching in the light. Cynthia, I'm sorry. Stitching in the light, she was showing how she did embroidery. And the pattern that she bought, I went and bought, was it Calico Junction, I think, and it was a, it was a St. Nick in a wreath. I bought it. And she was saying she needed to learn how to do a stitch. She didn't know how to do it. She just YouTubed it, learned the stitch. So that's the thing is there's so, there's so many awesome tutorials out there. If you can't find anything in the pattern, there will be a tutorial out there. So um, just get a needle. And so the thing is, when we're doing cross stitch, I think most of us use a tapestry needle. So these are just embroidery needles. Um, just different needles, same thread, everything. So, oh gosh, um, any of you that are still here, um, I had done, I did a um, cabochon or thread charm um, tutorial, not tutorial, and showed how to do that. And that was when I got 4,000 subscribers. So I showed my giveaways that I was doing at the time. So that was a couple floss tubes ago. And um, I was just going to do four because I had four, um, I had 4,000 subscribers. And as I was thinking about it, I thought this, this has become so important to me. I have so many people that are following me regularly and just supporting me with beautiful comments and praying for me and just being a part of my life that I thought I can't just do four. So I, I made eight. So I did eight giveaways and I commented on that comment because I, I give you a week um, cause that's, I'll forget. And I just like to reward the people that watch the videos right away. So I gave people a week. They had until the 24th to comment on that video. And there are two winners that have not responded. Um, so I need Patricia Dodd and Denise Hall to, um, I commented on your comment. Um, send me an email with your address and, um, and I'll get those charms to you. And I, I need to do it soon otherwise I'll go on to someone else but I would love for you guys to get that and my you guys mean so much to me especially right now there's a, just a lot going on in the world and um and a lot of concern and worry going on so that's why I just wanted to thank people so much um and Rocio if you're watching I still have yours to send to you um that one just didn't get sent off in the batch so it will come to you um, I had, so, so now this is where I call, this is my good stuff. So this is my faith journey. And this is where I just share about the things that I have been learning. So again, I just did a video a couple hours ago. So I shared a lot in that one. Um, where's my book? Okay. So here, my sweet, um, Lori from one, one of the gals in Stitching in the Valley had given me this beautiful, um, gratitude journal, handmade journal. And I really shared it in, in another video, but there was one day that I was just really concerned, um, just about with cancel culture and with everything that may be going on, how it could affect me and, and how, how choices that are being made could affect me and my family and the nation and everything. So just, just times of concern. My heart was very heavy. And I remember I woke up one morning and, um, I was just, I couldn't sleep the night before, just worrying. And I just was talking to my husband and was like, oh, what's going to happen about this? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And he had been up early and he's going through the Bible. He's listening to audio and he's reading, but he was going through the Bible and he said, oh, I got to share this with you. So, um, he, he had said, oh, I just read Psalm 27 or 28. I can't remember which one it was. So I said, oh, let me get my coffee and I'll sit down and stitch. And can you read it to me? And, um, that's where, when I have times of deep distress, I just love when people read to me, didn't even want to read. Um, so he did that for me and that's what I wrote. Um, I wrote that down in my gratitude journal for that day. But the other thing was, um, this was one of the add-ons and I had mentioned this in my last video, but it was celebrate who you are and who I am is a Christ follower. And I know that's not, um, not going to be popular. And, um, repercussions may come because of that and things that I believe in. And I just thought, oh, I was just worrying. Isn't this gorgeous? So I just had different comments that people made. I wrote things down and, 
Um, so I just love this that I can just write more and more and more stuff in here. So that was just very special to me. So I just appreciate so much um, the people that support me and love me and stay with me to the very end. So where's my Bible? Here we go. Ah, this is a pink Bible too. Um, so I wanted to read to you. So Psalm 27 was awesome. Psalm 28 is awesome. But I'm just going to choose to read now Psalm 28. And this is, this was when I had, this was when I was going through my nervous breakdown time. Uh, December 2001. Um, yeah, that was my breakdown time. Um, so this was the Bible I had at that time and I could write in it and um, all that kind of stuff. So it was just a nice, a nice Bible for that. So here we go. Psalm 28. So this again was my husband reading it to me as I was drinking my coffee and stitching. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I cry to you for help. As I lift up, lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Do not drag me away with the wicked, with those who do evil, who speak cordially with their neighbors, but harbor malice in their hearts. Repay them for their deeds and for their evil work. Repay them for what their hands have done and bring back upon them what they deserve, since they show no regard for the works of the Lord and what his hands have done. He will tear them down and never build them up again. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. So that's just the kind of thing I needed when I feel helpless because we may be affected by decisions that other people are making for us. And um, I don't like that. I feel helpless. I don't like to feel helpless. Um, I don't think anybody does, but I've had things in the past where I have felt helpless and I don't like it as an adult. I fight against it. So that's, I think, why I'm having a little more turmoil right now. Um, not that I have more turmoil than anyone else. It's like, well, I'm really struggling right now. So that just helps me. God, you will take care of the things that are done wrong. I don't need to get in and mess around with it unless he shows me something that I need to do to take care of myself. Um, and he will help me. He will be my defense. He will be my rock and my stronghold. So those are the things that, um, that I just wanted to share. So I just loved that he read to me. I also have the whole Bible on tape and I'm just letting that be read to me. Um, and sometimes as I stitch, I'll just stitch and just listen to the Bible. So there you go. Um, that was something that I wanted to share with you because that was such a help for me. And I appreciate you guys so much, especially those of you who stay till the end and are in this with me. And I value that so much. So thank you guys so much. Pray that you would choose joy nevertheless. And this is how we can because God will be our defense. God knows all. He sees all. What is done in the darkness he will bring it to light in his time and he will deal with it so we can rest in that and we can know that we are his. So there you go. God bless you.